It's the day of the game and I've really only just found time for a preview. Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new preview here on the channel. I'm James and this I'm going to be sitting down talking to you guys about the Villa game coming up tonight. Uh, it should be a really interesting one. Uh, as both teams haven't really hit form so far this season. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this one as Villa have sold their end out. Apparently there's 4k Villa fans coming down. Um, and it's a chance as well for us to kind of get a grips of what this season's going to be a little bit like. Uh, a lot of our players are going to be back from injury now. I think the only real long-term absences are going to be Kermigan and uh, Watson. Uh, with McCleary and Behrens back in training now. Uh, we potentially could see these two on the bench uh, tomorrow. Um, yesterday as well, uh, Sam Smith and Andy Runamata uh, did not play any part at all in the under-23s game against Southampton. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be seeing them involved in the squad somehow. Um, so, I mean, the likelihood is we won't see Beerins or McCleary. Uh, we'll probably just see Roy uh, because, well, McCleary, we like to get him a little bit more match fit before he can uh, even think about making the squad because realistically, uh, an unfit McCleary is someone you don't really want in your team. Uh, whereas Roy Behrens, um, I personally rate him very highly. I think he's very skillful on the ball. Uh, and I think because he doesn't have that about a pace about him um, and he's more of a skillful type of player, uh, I think he would be better than McCleary as an unfit, just off the bench player um, for this game. Uh, but going into this one though, uh, who personally I would pick, uh, no good graphics in this one just because I won't have the time to do it. Um, I'll go Mononi in goal, I'll go Gunter, Ilori, McShane, Moore and Obita, uh, and Black at the back. Uh, obviously Obita is still out, that's probably another one of the long term absences, uh, Jordan Obita, so yeah, make that free. Um, but yeah, I'll go with them five at the back. Uh, I think the McShane, Ilori and more partnership uh, worked very well uh, against Fulham obviously a big help was that they were down to 10 men um, and I thought it kind of crumbled as soon as them five got disrupted uh, I thought Gunter had a decent game against Fulham uh, obviously was at fault for one of the goals and that was probably the poorest part of the game he had um, but yeah I thought he had a decent game overall and uh, Blackett I didn't really think he had too good of a game in all honesty uh, I saw a lot of people were divided opinions on Blackett against Fulham uh, but personally I didn't think he had that good of a game um, but yeah, I mean, there could be more to come from him as well throughout this season. Obviously, we saw the likes of Blackett playing left centre-back uh, in a five-man back five. He played really well there, um, but he didn't really play well at left wing-back. And again, we're starting to see that not really playing well at left wing-back. So if there is an injury or disruption in the free centre-back pairing, probably going to see Blackett move into the centre. Uh, if I'm going to go for the midfield, uh, personally, I'll go with Quinn, Kelly and Evans. Uh, probably Kelly sitting, uh, sorry, probably Evans and Kelly sitting a little bit deeper to Quinn. Uh, play Quinn a little bit further forward, kind of in that John Swift role. Um, I personally wouldn't start Swift as, in my opinion, he's been very poor in the games we've seen him this season. Um, he hasn't really hit form ever since that injury all the way back in December. Um, and I'm starting to believe now that maybe that form at the start of last season was maybe just a blip in his game. That it was a good blip. And now we're starting to see the more better, realistic, well, the side of John Swift that we're going to be seeing more. Um, Brentford fans have been saying for a long time that John Swift is not a really good player. And in my opinion, we're starting to slowly see that come out now. Um, so fingers crossed he can return back to his form. But I wouldn't start him in this game. I'd actually have him on the bench uh, because I think Quinn deserves a start. I think he played really well against Gillingham. Um, despite not having much football, a start maybe a little bit two out there straight away um, but again I think Quinn's a really good player so I personally would start him in this game because technically he's great on the ball and um, he always seems to be fit as well he never seems to run out of energy so uh, yeah probably put Quinn in there uh, and then if I was to go for the two up front uh, it would have to be Joe Mendes and Mo Barrow uh, Mendes did really well against Villa away uh, last season picked up two goals but I think that was because Lewis Graben was alongside him um, as much as we've hated Lewis Graven when he was at the club um, he really was a, more of a team player than anything um, he did keep the ball for a lot of the time but he made other players look really good and that's something that he did against Villa away um, really did help Joe Mendes and Joe Mendes looked great against Villa 
Um, fingers crossed Mo Barrow can do the same for him, uh, make them chances. But from what I've seen of Mendes this season, he hasn't really looked the greatest. There's only been two games in, uh, but he hasn't been making any chances, no opportunities, and just really hasn't been looking that good. Uh, so I'd start Joe Mendes anyway, just because he's our only fit striker. So that's kind of the only reason why I'm going for him. Uh, and then alongside him, Mo Barrow. I thought Barrow played really well against Fulham. Uh, got Callas that red card. I think it was Callas anyway. Um, got him that red card 30 seconds into the game. And looked very skillful on the ball. And really pacey as well. And against the Villa team that has John Terry, Chris Samba, uh, Alan Hutton. Players like that at the back who aren't the fastest. Uh, we could see Mo Barrow have a bit of a field day. I mean, lumping the ball over the top to him. Uh, getting him on the end of that pace, uh, we could really see some um, great coming out of uh, Chris, uh, coming out of Mo Barrow against Chris Samba and Terry. Uh, people off the bench, I uh, wouldn't mind seeing Leonardo Bacuna come on for his first game. Um, as someone we could potentially see starting the midfield as well. Uh, I don't know how fit he is. I don't know if he's been playing for Villa or not, but um, we could potentially see Bacuna play in this game, um, or well involved in some sort of way. Uh, Swift, Beerins, any of these players I'd like to see come off the bench. Uh, Popper could potentially as well. Um, just anyone really that can create an impact uh, I would like to see. If I'm going to go into a score prediction then what personally I would go for. Uh, I either see Reading edging this game out 1-0, 2-1 around that area. Or I can see it being a draw. At the moment I think Villa have been very poor. Obviously losing 3-0 to Cardiff at the weekend. Uh, and before that picking up a draw against Hull which isn't a bad result. Uh, but I didn't think Villa played that great in that game. Uh, but personally, I'm going to go with a 1-0 win to Reading. Uh, and I see I see Stephen Quinn getting the goal. Uh, either late on or early, um, I see Quinn getting the goal. And uh, yeah, that's how I see the game going. So that's going to be it for the video today, guys. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. Um, if you have, don't forget to drop a like. And don't forget to tell me what you guys, uh, who you think will start for Reading in this fixture. So thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, I've been James. We'll see you guys all for the next video in the Matchday Experience coming out tonight. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all then. Peace.